Hello everybody. In this video, in continuing my uh, uh, investigations into ChatGPT, I decided to give it some uh, IQ test questions <laughs> and not really measure its IQ, but just wanted to see the response of uh, the ChatGPT to some uh, normal uh, IQ test questions. So here is what I got, and I thought I would share it with you. So I went to some of these websites like Brainable that has free IQ test questions. And uh, here I have some of these questions. I gave it to ChatGPT, and I want to show you the responses. So the first one is, if the population of a race doubles every two minutes, how long would it take it to go from 1,000 to 32,000? And the answers are 5, 10, 15, and 20. So let's take a look at uh, what it has for me. So uh, you clearly see that uh, it found the basic thing that if it is doubling every two minutes, then we can use exponential grow. Okay, so you see it clearly got this part, right? We can use exponential grow, right? Uh, because it is going up, uh, doubling every two minutes. Of course, you can use a um, what we call a geometric progression too, right? And use that one. But let's see. So here you see it is using a formula and says the population is the initial population times two, uh, which is the factor of that exponential uh, to the power t over d, right? Now, it's a power function, not really an exponential function. And um, here, um, uh, the d is 2 as well. And then from there, uh, because d is the time it takes, and that 2 is 2 times, and d is every 2 minutes. right? So you have to divide your time by 2 minutes to see how many of those 2 minutes you need. So this 2 is to that power times initial. So this is exactly that geometric progression formula that I talked about, okay? This is not an exponential formula, but it is using it. And based on the natural log of that, it finds that a t uh, should be like 5. And since it does 5 of those 2 minutes, so the total time is about 10 minutes, which is the correct answer. So you see, it correctly identified the method to solve, and it clearly what solved the problem. Here, uh, let's go over the second problem. So it says, if you have 11 lions, 4 cats, and 7 crows, and uh, they have a total of how many eyes, how many heads, how many tails, and how many wings, which one of these is correct? And let's look at the answer. So the way I gave it this uh, question is I said, how many total eyes, tails, wings, and heads do 11 lions, 4 cats, and 7 crows have? And again, it did it very fine. It says, hey, let's go category by category. Lions, there are 11 of them. They have two eyes, one tail, zero wings, and one head. So it calculated how many total of each one the 11 lions have. Then it went over the, cat, went over the cats went over the crows and then added all of them together. And now it gives me 44 eyes, 22 tails, 40, 14 wings and 22 heads, which I can see that this is the right answer, right? So you can easily use this. Then it says the price of an item was lowered by 25%. How much should you now increase it by what percent so that it goes back to its original price, right? And again, here you see that it says if it go down by 25%, so now it's 75% of what it is. And then now the final price if x is the percent of increase is going to be one plus x times 0.75 now if you set that equal to p from here you can find x to be about what a third and that is the correct answer it is 33 percent so you see so far it has done really amazing job no worries then here is a simple question. It is saying what is the next number in this sequence, which is a simple arithmetic uh, progression, adding a two at a time. And so it wasn't definitely a big thing for this guy. 
right? So when I gave it to it, it says, you see, it's an arithmetic progression with the common difference of two. You see, it even explains that to you that each term is uh, the previous term plus a two, therefore your next term should be 12. So it explains very well as well. It's not just like uh, it solves, it gives you the final answer. Then here I gave it the, uh, from the website, I gave it the Fibonacci series. And here each term is the sum of the two previous terms. And I ask again for the next term. It says, what is the next number in the following sequence? And you see, again, it easily recognized that this appears to be a Fibonacci series. And clearly it says to me that the next term should be eight. So you see, as long as the data exists, it does an amazing job. Now, here is the interesting part. I said, if you rearrange the letters in LIZARB, right, L-I-Z-A-R-B, you get the name of a what? Do you get the name of a country, a river, a city, or an animal, right? And look at here. It says, if you rearrange this, you can get blizzard, right, which is none of those options, right, which can be rearranged to form the word blizzard. Now, here it is making a mistake, okay? It is adding a D to it. That guy cannot be rearranged to this. You're adding a letter to it. So, here is clearly going wrong. And it says it's a severe storm and so on, and it's not the name of a city, river, or country. So clearly, this is the part that it could not solve it. It tried to get it to the closest thing that we human might know, but uh, based on what it has information, but clearly what it could not do it. And I decided to do something interesting this time. I said, well, let's compare the intelligence of this guy to Google, right? Of course, Google does not have intelligence. I mean, it does have intelligence when it does the search, but it's not known to be like something that you can chat with like this. So now, is Google going to do anything better than this? And the answer is yes, actually, because it finds a website that has relevant information. So I just type this information in Google. And guess what? The first thing it found for me, because somebody put that question onto Quora, and it says you'll get Brazil, which is the name of a country. Do you see that? So probably this OpenAI chat GPT was not trained on maybe everything on Quora or not at all. Because if it did, then it could find this page and it could say, hey, that could be Brazil or something, right? So sometimes Google can help you more than ChatGPT, believe it or not. Okay, then it went into um, basically uh, words and it says, which one of these words is the odd one? Guess, inquire, seek, and demand. And it says demand. Because guess, inquire, and seek, they all involve an element of uncertainty or seeking information, which is exactly true. But demand is completely different. It's a more forceful and assertive action. So clearly it found the answer. Very well explanation. Amazing job. And finally, relations, it says the relation between, or knee, the relation between hip to ankle is shoulder to what? right? Hip to ankle is shoulder to what? This is like the top and this is like the bottom of the leg and so this is like the top of the hand and so you're looking at the bottom of the hand, the, the joint, right? So you're probably looking at wrist here, but let's take a look. So it says the hip and ankle are part of the leg with hip being the joint on the top probably and this is the bottom. So shoulder and wrist are part of the human arm. Shoulder is on the top and wrist at the bottom. So it says wrist is the answer and that is exactly correct. So you see out of several questions that I gave it, it went wrong only on one, which is rearranging uh, letters and getting the name of a well-known place. And I guess with more training, it can easily overcome that. 
right? <laughs> so uh, if it can read pictures soon and it can take, uh, and I'm sure it can, if it can read and understand pictures by computer vision and answer IQ tests that are uh, using pictures like rotating figures, patterns, and so on, it's no surprise that this machine soon will pass all of us in terms of IQ tests. But the question is, does IQ tests really show IQ if the questions and the answers to them are readily available and it's more of a knowledge thing, as you can see, than real innovation and intelligence? So if it's about knowing and working around things and getting the answers, clearly this guy is really intelligent and should have a good IQ. So just wanted to share my experience with you and see what you think about uh, IQ test of ChatGPT. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.